Okay, so I'm going to be talking about a model that Joshua Benchu talks about in a lot of papers, a lot of presentations, also at conferences, and he's very bullish on this idea of GFlowNet. So I'm just going to be giving a very high level tutorial on how this model and network actually works. So the intention of this model is to try to involve some reasoning into models and try to get them to think sequentially and in terms of causality. So sentences, whenever I'm seeing a sentence or we're generating sentences, we're always generating them altogether. On the other hand, when you are thinking of certain thoughts, your thoughts are sequentially generated in the sense that you're piecing together different parts of our thinking, different parts of our knowledge, and then you're putting it together to do some sort of action. And every time you have more thoughts, it just adds on and it helps make certain decisions easier or do certain actions. So in this way, each element is added one at a time. So to explain how GFlowNet actually works, I have three Lego blocks that I actually stole from my brother. So basically, what happens is you start off with an initial state. So you have an initial state, which in this case are three Lego blocks. Now, this entire model is based on graphs, meaning that there are nodes and there are edges. So in this case, the nodes are referred to as states and the edges are referred to as transitions. So together, the actions make tra trajectories of those states. And you have an initial state, which I already mentioned are these Lego blocks. And then let's make the final state something like this. So this is what the model is trying to reconstruct, and it's going to do this one Lego block at a time. This is a very simple example, only because I've used three Lego blocks and I didn't want to make a whole boat or any big complex structure because that would just make the video unnecessarily long. So basically, again, you have a trajectory to go to this final object. So you start off with the initial state, as I mentioned, and what happens is that you have the G flow net taking, let's say, a partial construction. So there's many ways that you can go to the final state, which I already mentioned. You can do this and then add this on here and then add this on here and you reach the end state. You could also put these two together and then add this on as the end state. Or what you could do is you could take this, put this at the bottom, put this here, and then you also have the end or final state. So there's many ways that you can get to the point. There's many trajectories leading to, in other words, the final state. So basically what happens is you are trying to take some sort of partial constructed object. So let's say this is the partial construction that the model has already made from the initial state. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to feed this into the model. The model is going to say, let's do either a forward sampling policy, which in this case would be adding a Lego block, or let's do a backward sampling policy, which is, let's say, removing a Lego block. And so what happens is it tries to learn this policy, which is kind of similar to RL. So even though you're trying to generate some sort of path to get to the end state, it's still f based on the Markov chain and RL terms and jargon. So again, you can have these two different sampling policies that undergo these changes. And so at the end, what happens is it learns the policies, takes the partial construction as input, and then it has the action that it performs based on what that policy says. And so let's say, it goes over here, and this is what it thinks the end state is. So again, the end state is actually this, but let's say the model says that, okay, we're at our end state now. We've reached what is known as the final state or the terminal, terminal state. So now we can get a reward based on this. We can get a reward based on, let's say, the similarity of this and then the final construction, which is this. And so based on this, the model is able to learn what actions it should be taking sequentially. And hopefully through Joshua Benjo's hypothesis, which again, he's very bullish on, it will help models get a sense of causality and how to sequentially reason through get to the final state.